And good morning and, and welcome to the Lacey Creek Church of Christ worship service. Uh, I would like to read a, a few verses here before Brother Paul brings the message. Uh, I always think it a, a real privilege to be able to, to read from God's Word. I want to go to Colossians chapter 3. <coughs> In verse 1 it says, If ye be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. This is written to Christians, those that have been risen with Christ. To be risen with Christ, in uh, verse 12 of the preceding chapter, we're told, buried with Him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead. When we're buried with Christ, we give our life to Christ. We're buried with Him in His death, and we become Christians. Uh, and if we have done these things, and if we have been risen with Christ, we're told to seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We need to forget about the things of this world or not contemplate them. I mean, there's things we have to do to take care of our families and things like that. But our minds should be fixed on the things of heaven. We should continue to read Scripture. We should continue to remember the Lord. We should continue to attend services and, and praise and worship the Lord. We should continue to sing hymns and continue to, to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Hebrews 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. We need to continue to seek the Lord. We need to draw near to Him, and when we do that, He will draw near to us. We need to turn away from Satan, and, and He'll flee. We're told that in the Scriptures. And we need to continue to, to be as close to the Lord as we can, and we do that by setting our minds on the things that are above. Verse 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye were dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. In Romans chapter 6. I want to start with verse 6. This is talking about being baptized into Christ. And in verse 6 it says, Knowing this, that your old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth you shall not serve sin. When we become Christians, when we raise from the dead, when we become new creatures in Christ, we live for the Lord. And we don't serve sin anymore. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. So that goes along with verse 3, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Where Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members, or put to death those members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the time or in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. There was a time in our lives before we gave our life to Christ that we were disobedient, that we didn't follow Him. We're told, though He were a son, yet learned He obedience by the things which He suffered. And being made perfect, He became the author of eternal salvation unto all who obeyed Him. We need to be obedient to the Father and to the Son. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. 
We need to live our life for Christ. We need to endure to the end. We're told those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We need to continue faithfully. We've got another year coming up, another year ahead of us. We need to get closer and closer to the Lord as that day draws to there. This time, Brother Paul, to bring a message. Brother Dan. Those wonderful words. <clears throat> Truth. <clears throat> feel honored to uh, <clears throat> to stand up here before you to bring God's word <clears throat> and his message to you today. Something that I had uh, so many years in the past ran from trying not to do what God wanted me to do. But uh, <clears throat> Have you ever tried to have somebody tell you proof? Prove to me what you're doing. Prove to me you who you are, who you say you are. Prove to me that you can do this. Prove to me that you can do that. That's what I kind of want to bring you to today is proof that God is who he says he is. Now, I've got a lot of reading today, but also... Uh, some my own comments, but if you want to turn to your Bibles to John chapter 1. What proof did Jesus give that he was truly God, and he is who he says he is? He's born in a stable, and he just came out of Christmas season, and we celebrate the birth of Christ. He's born in a little town, a stable in Bethlehem, the Virgin Mary, and that he came to us in human form. Matthew chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 21 to 23 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. <clears throat> For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And he came on a mission of love and mercy from his father. His birth was announced. His name was given him. The heaven and host sang at his birth. And the wise men were guided by, by a star in the east. He is the most well-known child that is ever born. Probably nowhere that you can go in this world that you don't hear the name of Jesus Christ. Some places look down on but his name is known. The most holy child of Mary, the Son of God, he was born into a world of persecution. At his birth, Herod, Herod decreed his death and pursued to end it, but to no avail. He tried every way that he could from children from two years old to destroy him. Thought he was going to take his kingdom from him. The Son of God became a tiny, helpless infant. He was made in the likeness of man and took on our human nature. Why? Because he loved us. He took on this human form, the same that you and I have. But the Bible says that he was with the Father from the beginning. Powerful proof that Jesus is the Son of God, our Savior. In John chapter 1, I have to write my stuff in bold letters now because I can't see anything up close. Kind of like Sanford, I've carried more than one glass. So. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God, the Word 
being signified, beginning signifies the fellowship between God the Father and God the Son, and that they were always together. Christ was always with God, even before the foundation of the world. John chapter 1, 3, 1 through 5 says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life of the light was of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, the first evidence of its power says, is power was the power of God Almighty. <clears throat> the power only God has. He calmed the seas, He raised the dead, He healed the sick, He gave sight to the blind, and He made the lame to walk. In Jesus, <clears throat> there is life, there is salvation and delivered through him. And the miracles that he did were a witness to the fact that he is Lord of all. These miracles are the fact that he is who he says he is. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 17 states, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist, for all things are held together that he made. God made all these things, and they were made for him. And he holds them all together in his hands. Second proof is his perfect life. John chapter 4, verse 46 states, Jesus asked the people, he asked them a question, can anyone prove me guilty of sin? <coughs> no one could. He couldn't answer because his life was perfect. They tried every way they could to condemn our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was able to stand against all the fiery temptations that Satan had to offer. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was tempted just as you and I are tempted today. He had struggles just as we did. He had trials just as we did. He was human, but he was God in the human body. Remember, he knew what was coming. The cup that he had to drink, the path that he had to walk, and the suffering that he would endure. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, he knew what was going on. He had to go through. For you and I. For the people coming after us. He knew what he had to do for them. He shed his life giving blood for you and me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says, He was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He went through everything that we go through, but yet he didn't have any sin. He was perfect. He came from the Father. Third evidence is <clears throat> fulfilled prophecy. About a hundred years, <clears throat> prophets talked about Christ hundreds of years before his birth. Prophets of the Old Testament spoke about the place where he would be born, his life, and his death. Micah chapter 2 <clears throat> talks about his birth. Chap <clears throat> I'm sorry, chapter 5, first two, I can't see it says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephurathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me 
that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 through 5. It says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath in no form, no God, or no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of <coughs> sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he is wounded for our transgressions. He is bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And in Psalms, chapter 22. Verse 1 talks about his death. It says, For my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou far from helping me? And from thy words of my roaring. And also back in Isaiah, chapter 53, <clears throat> 8 through 10 says, he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his graves with the great with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. <coughs> Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The prophets saw his birth, his life, and his death. John, back over here. John chapter 1, verse 6 says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was not in the world, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, that he, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Evidence that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. Resurrected from the dead. Romans chapter 1, verse 4 says, Declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. 
Jesus Christ is who he says he is. John, the Baptist, spoke of he's, that he was the Son of God. People from all walks of life have lived and they've died and were buried and we visit their graves today. The remains are still there. But Christ is alive. His tomb is empty. A powerful proof that God is God in the flesh. But he is risen. The grave couldn't hold him. Acts chapter 2. 29 through 35 states, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith unto himself, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. And in 1 Peter <coughs> chapter 3 verse 18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickeneth by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waiting in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved. The like figure of wherein too, even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. With this, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Proof that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Proof that he rose again from the grave. And proof that he is sitting on the right hand of God, making intercessions for you and I. Fifth and final proof is proof of change. Lies in the Bible clearly states that the heart is deceitful and wicked. Above all things, it says, who can know it? In Jeremiah chapter 17 and 9. Our hearts are deceitful. We're desperately wicked. There's every evil thought that runs through our minds and our hearts daily. Who puts them there? Satan. But Jesus Christ is our conqueror. Jesus Christ is our King. He's our Lord. And He's our Savior. Mm -hmm. Only God knows the heart. And He can change it. Only the Son of God has power to change your heart, to change my heart. Amen. Who do you put your trust in today? What proof do you need today that Christ is who he says he is? What more proof do you need that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary? Shed his life's giving blood for you and me. Something that we can never begin to repay him. But I'll offer thanks and praise.
praises to his name by accepting him as their Savior. Back in Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> 36 says, Wherefore, let, us, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Peter talked. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, <clears throat> Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That promise is made to you and I. Over 2,000 years ago, when Peter and the apostles said that, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, he's gone to sit on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. As we get ready to sing, stand and sing, Number 92, we're closing the song. Christ can take the most sinful, selfish, and evil person and bring forgiveness and a new life. <clears throat> but in a new heart, in him or her, knowing that there is proof in God's power that he gave his life for us, shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for man's sin. We have proof that Jesus is the Christ. The Word of God tells us His Word is proof, His Word is true, and His Word is genuine. He is who He says He is, our Savior, if we accept Him at His Word. They try to destroy the Word down through the ages of time. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It changes not. He will endure forever. Jesus Christ will endure forever. If you accept Jesus Christ today as your Savior, you can have eternal life, the eternal bliss. We are talking about the Sunday school today, this morning, in Brandon and Elizabeth. The most beautiful place on earth cannot begin to compare with the things that he has in store for us. Our minds cannot comprehend it. <coughs> for the life that he has in store for those of us who Today, powerful proof that Christ is who he says he is. Your Savior, if you accept him today, is your Savior. Accept him into your life. Believe on him. Repent. Confess him. And to be baptized to raise and walk in the newness of life. Today as we say in the same number 92, accept it today as we say.